Well, I'm here with Alice Katuzian on your 10th Snapdragon Summit. We appreciate all of the uh, invites and being here as a guest. Awesome. So, Thanks for coming. Yeah. So a, lunch, a bunch of stuff happened this week. So let's talk about a couple of the new products. So just at a high level, walk me through uh, a couple of the things that you're most excited about when it comes to the new product platforms. So uh, every year we introduce premium tier solutions at this event. And the reason for it is, the overarching reason is, the technology advancement can end up in much better user experiences for the consumer. And we have, the, we have a whole ecosystem of partners that we work with, OS vendors, OEMs, ISVs, app developers, that kind of take advantage of this acceleration and this hardware capability. And, and they put forth user experiences that people enjoy every day. It makes their lives better. So we want to make a difference in people's lives. And this year is no different. And on this 10th year, we're introducing two premium tier solutions, one for the handset, one for the PC. And for the handset, I think we have one of the best solutions we've ever produced uh, coming to market. And it's like a massive amount of interest in what we have to offer. And it's the uh, Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. And it is the fastest CPU capable device that we brought to market, improved the GPU, improved the NPU, improved the ISP, and the wireless communication is best in class. So combined, these cores are getting to have user experiences that have never been seen before. Uh, developers are, 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 are excited about it. OEMs are excited about it. OS vendors are excited about it. So it's really a, an exciting time. And then the second uh, system solution we're introducing is the uh, X2 Elite for PCs. Every two years now, we introduce new PC chipsets. We promised at the end of 2024 that performance per watt is going to be our continuous differentiation, and we haven't missed. And this year, with the X2, X2 Elite coming, X2 Elite uh, Extreme Edition and X2 Elite coming to market, we have the best performance per watt capability in the market not only from a CPU perspective, but NPU has also improved quite a bit, almost double the performance that we had in 2024. And so we, we're hoping that that acceleration we created with X1 is going to continue with X2. We have over 100 designs that's going to proliferate in 2026. I think we're in a great position to expand this market for us. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some of the technical categories in terms of architecture. So how would you explain architecturally where we're at with generation on Orion? This is the third generation of third Orion. generation. Yeah, third generation of Orion CPU. We introduced the second generation in in mobile last year, and so because PCs every two years now, Gen three is coming into into phone and into PC okay. at the same time. Same time. Yes, at the same time. And so so Gen three, probably the actually the fastest CPU in the mobile market today. Fastest CPU, and the reason why we picked that is because not only just to say it's it's you know benchmark speed the fastest, but we're making tasks available for the CPU to cover through the entire system. As you know, the CPU touches everything mm. in every system, and, and because it's the most general, generally programmed processor in the world, and, and it touches, on, on the handset side at least, it touches multitasking, AI tasks, um, it, it helps with graphics and gaming, uh, it helps with uh, web browsing, many, many other things. People kind of take grant for granted web browsing. We do it right. probably more than anything else throughout the day. So if it's not smooth, if it got if it's got janks or transitions are bad, all that stuff is not a good user experience. So I think really proud of the fact that we continue pushing the CPU curve up and up and up, but at the same time, power dissipation becomes right. very, very good for us. So performance per watt is still leading the industry. Yeah, so still great performance on those, but not sacrificing battery life That's across correct. the across the board. That's correct. Um, all right, so let's talk about personal AI, mm -hmm. a category that you know you guys extend, which I think the way you articulated this is actually more than just the way that others will, where it's just about like wearable AI, right? Because you're yeah. talking about the compute ecosystem, yeah. you're talking about devices and smartphones yeah. with this whole kind of new way to, to understand, right? So why don't you just share with us a little bit more yeah. about that? So I, I think a, um, when I looked at it, in the way I'm going to describe to you, it, it made a big, big difference for me to realize 
what wearable AI and personal AI actually mean. So if you looked at the transition from feature phones to smartphones, when we went over there, the OS became the center and the apps became the center and the OEMs built phones with those types of capabilities and like, you know, launching an app and navigating through an OS menu and, you know, using apps to do things for you and you have a bunch of apps that are downloaded on your phone and then the phone became kind of a central item and then the smart watch and the earbuds and the smart ring that you wear to all of it centered around the phone, the glasses are connected to the phone. You're, even your laptop can get connected to the phone, tablets connected to the phone, they synchronize things. So it's a phone-centric environment. And we think that's gonna continue for a while because you're not getting rid of right. phones uh, anytime soon. But the way agentic AI is coming into play, and by the way, AI was in the background all the time. All, all of a sudden, it became forefront because people can talk to the device or ask it to do something or it can answer a question or it can generate something for you or it can help you with your tasks. They became center stage. Now that assistant plus the human is the center of mm. things. Okay? Instead of the phone being the center of things, the OS being. So the user interface becomes how you speak to the device or how you command the device or what you ask of the device. The user experience is centered around the human and what you do throughout the day. What you do throughout the day contains a lot of personal data that you have created. And so if the assistant can understand what you do throughout the day, what your personal data is, and how it can answer your questions and your queries and tasks that you have to do, all of those things become personal AI. And it's best to create an environment where your multiple devices that you carry understand each other and can offload to one another to try to answer your questions as quickly as possible based on the memory that they have, based on the computing capability that they have, based on how big of a model they can store mm -hmm. and answer your questions quickly and then orchestrate from that to the cloud. Why? Because we need the hybrid model. Sometimes the models on device cannot reason as much as they can on the cloud. They can answer real time data that's being updated all the time in the cloud. So we need, we need the combination of both. And imagine if the queries become in the trillions, what, what does that do to the traffic between the edge devices and the cloud. It becomes very, very clustered. And so I think that combination is where we're headed and these personal AI devices that you're gonna have with you, whether you're wearing them or it's on your face or it's on your wrist or it's in your pocket, it doesn't matter. It could be a, a, you know, a puck that's sitting on your desk at home and you move it from room to room. All of these devices are a game where the agent on the device and the agent in the cloud can assist you all the time. Mm. Centered around the human, center around your agent. Yeah, I think that's a, a compelling way to think about it, especially when you know, we've sort of used this example, right? The, the, the best example of where that's going, for lack of a better analogy, but you know, Jarvis, right, with, with Iron Man, that like you could just talk to it, it has sentience, it understands your context, but more important, like it just knows you because yeah. it's been working on your behalf forever. Yeah. And I think that's, it, it's hard, right, to gather because we've never tried anything like that, but it's a very compelling right, story for consumers to have something that, that powerful that's yes. highly personal. And you should be in control of allowing what personal data is available to your assistant. And if you trust it and you can make sure it's in a trusted environment, whether it's on your device or in, or in the cloud and it's encrypted for you and you can only access it, all those things will be in your own control. You give it credentials, you give it permissions, and it's, it can start doing things for mm. you. Get an Uber, you know, uh, a and why? Because it'll have access, for example, to your text access to your contacts, access to your email, access to your schedule, access to your location. It can understand. Like, uh, I've, you know, I talked about an example at the, um, at the uh, Snapdragon Summit where I was introducing the parts where I say, imagine you're at a concert, okay? And, and you, wanna, you wanna film the concert. Usually you bring out your phone and you miss it or you're fumbling around. You're wearing a pair of glasses. You say, hey, record this. It knows exactly when to record. Okay, stop. And then, where does the video go? To the cloud? No, you want to go to the device. Let it go to the device. Why? Because the device now can edit it mm. for you. Okay? The agent will say, do you want this edited? Yes. Do you want to see the end result? Yes. Do you want to post it? Yes. Mm. So it's doing a lot of things that you would have otherwise launched a bunch of things to do. Yep. So those are types of examples where it's like your best friend yeah. you know, can do this for me. And you trust it, right? And you you trust, trust it. that it's not going to go do something weird that you don't want. Like you're happy with the outcome. That's correct. 
Yeah. All right, so I want to talk about automotive for, for, for a minute, just because I know in circles that we converse, right, there's always questions about where you guys are going in automotive, and it's been one of the better performing businesses for you, right, across such the board. A, such a great business. And, and I, yeah. but I, most of it, right, has been focused on, um, you know, just some of the basic features of, like, d digital cockpit and entertainment, and we're on the cusp of ADAS, and ADAS feels like to be another big opportunity. So maybe just talk about why Qualcomm is well positioned for ADAS in this next generation yeah, of automotive. Absolutely a great opportunity for us. And, uh, you know, we have, first of all, we have the computational capability to try to take all that real-time uh, AI, AI computation and run it on the car itself. Uh, so we have the cores to do that. Two, I think our partnership with uh, BMW and, and having Arriver come to Qualcomm is a great example of us investing in the future of where automotive is mm. going to go, and and then um, at the end, when you when you look at an electric car, of course it's great for the environment. Um, of course, it doesn't use you know gas power things. Of course, getting around town is 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 very simple, and you can actually treat it as a very very strong smartphone with apps and. You know, you can, you can see everything visually and all these things. But when it becomes very safe is when there's multiple autonomous driving vehicles mm. on the road where they can now communicate with each other, where they can know where people are. They can recognize the right. environment. They can tell you where to go. All of those things are, are where we're headed with, with autonomous driving and investing in that environment. So... Having the computational capability and the software stack to make that happen with partnerships with the ecosystem that are so, so strong puts us in a great position to grow in that market. Mm. Yeah, I think that's important too, right? Just as the whole industry right, is shifting away and especially as, um, as ICE vehicles come online, right? these are all the, the form of moving to electrical, moving into some of those broader uh, categories for ADAS, and ADAS is a staple feature, right? Yes, and, and the technology investment and ownership that Qualcomm has puts us in a really, really great position to compete in this market. Yeah. All right, so let's move to augmented reality. Yeah. Uh, uh, last week, there was an event. You and I were both mm -hmm. at MetaConnect. Yeah. Um, and this sort of feels like, well, one, it, it was pretty surprising the price that, that Meta is bringing Ray-Ban displays to. I think a lot of people were shocked to think that you're going to get, you know, a high, a high quality augmented reality experience at 789. You guys are obviously the, the chip in that. Um, but it feels like we're on the cusp of some degree of consumerization of augmented reality. I mean, 799 is a, it's, it's not a break the bank, right, type of, of, of a price point. Both the band and the... Yeah, with and the band the and, the, and, and the glasses. Yeah. And there's more coming, yeah. right? There's, this ecosystem's coming that we're going to see sub $1,000, a collection of glasses. So maybe just talk about you know, how you guys are thinking about the opportunity, right, for AR. I know you've got, obviously, a, a host of products lined up for that, but just what you're going to do in those systems with your partners to help bring about the consumerization of, of augmented reality. Yeah. So, so I think it's, uh, first of all, the glasses are such a familiar form factor. Everyone wears right. one, whether it's prescription or not, or sunglasses, or all these things. Everyone wears it. So people are super comfortable with these glasses. And so why shouldn't it be smart glasses? It can see what you see and hear what you hear. And so with the fact that the AI smart glasses are taking off in such a big way, just now imagine if you had more information on a display that you can see and interact with. It would be even, it would be even better. And so 100% so we think that this market is going to take off in a very large way. And, and, and you know, if there's time I could talk about MR too, and I think that's going to take mm -hmm. off in its own way because of the immersive content that is available there and is coming. Uh, but AR glasses, like they, I, I think today, if you look outside of Meta, there's multiple companies with AR right. glasses as well. And I've worn a pair where it's doing real time translation. Mm. And I can understand someone talking about things without waiting for a translator right. To, right. to do it. And that's extremely useful. Um, you know, being able to actually preview a picture that you take right. is very useful. Um, you know, being able to have information, maybe identifying people, and if it's in, if if they recognize a picture in your in your contacts and things like that, those things are super useful. Tracking your schedule, allowing you to pick things, or um, you know, talk to another AI about about tasks to do. All of those things are are very very useful. The point is, 
we've built a stack of products that can, that can go from low-end ambient type computing, low-end glasses, mm. mid-range glasses, high-end glasses, computing pucks, phones, and even, even AI capabilities that no one have ever, has ever seen before with reference designs, with an SDK, with an environment where we're kind of agnostic to the OS that's existing in the market. Right. It could be Horizon OS, it could be Android XR, it could be Linux, it could be multiple other things that we kind of mm. accumulate, port and test on top of our HDKs and provide SDKs to the developer community to do whatever they want. It could go across enterprise applications, military applications, consumer applications, all of those things are actually available to us. Unlike the start of the phone and how it emerged into OS and OEMs and chipset providers, we're actually taking a higher position in the stack with XR. And we're, we will extend it to wearable AIs as mm. well. And so the stack of products, the investment in perception, the investment in specialized hardware that can give you, so imagine PCs running in tens of watts, handsets low single digit watts, this below a watt. And I have technology to go across all of them. And I've invested in all of that technology architecturally to be similar to what you wear and what you put on your face, what you put in your ears are all the same architecture, same software, same HDKs, same SDKs, same ecosystem that we're working with. So it's really a really good position for us to grow into. Yeah, and I think it's an important point you know, that you talk about, not just architectural compatibility or, or the same fundamental techno technological approach, but that these things are all right full stack and more importantly, purpose built for these solutions, right? Purpose. I think p part of the, the problem we had prior to, let's just say, AI native was that people were like repositioning, Reusing, yeah, right? And yes. I think, so that's why I think the purpose built nature of that yeah. really opens up the opportunity. I, I don't know if many people know, we've been investing in XR since 2013 or 14, like massive amounts right. of years. Right. And so we, we are in the know. And I think by default, we became the choice, the platform of choice for people to work with. And yeah. So I think. Yeah. And I think just, you know, double clicking on the opportunity, having the demo that you had, right? And I, and I, there was, so many compelling parts of that. Like, I just don't think people are as excited about this is going to be until you get that demo. Yes, and you know, I think uh, we, we had a, a smart ring plus the glasses actually mm. controlling yes. that. We had a billion parameter model embedded into the glass itself, and it could answer a whole bunch of questions. You could see and ask questions about things, and it'll answer questions for you. And now imagine you have that quick answer here, and then you have a deeper answer on your phone, mm. and then we can orchestrate back to the cloud for even further answers that you might not have. Yeah. And so I think that, this multi-device environment, the, the way we can orchestrate between them, AI breathing life into these things, and our partners who see us as this essential technology provider to grow with them is, is, is gonna be great. Yeah, well I'm excited about this Me next too. era of devices, yeah. Yeah, yeah. AI native. So as always, I enjoy these chats. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Ben.